3D printed marine engine parts. This is a group out of Technical University of Denmark led by postdoc student uh, Thomas Dahman. Okay. Um, basically, the large marine engine of the world's cargo ships are, you know, those are the ones that power all these goods across the oceans, um, you know, taking things from Asia to North America, North America to Europe, all, you know, all around the world. Ships are the main thing, main mode of transportation by which large volumes of things are brought from continent to continent. As we focus and try to make the world's transportation effort or world's tra- transportation efforts more sustainable, the engines in these you know large, huge marine diesel engines in these cargo ships are one of the things we'll have to focus on. Um, trying to make them cleaner, trying to make them more efficient, um, and they say one of the best ways to do that is to focus on the injection nozzle, which injects fuel into the engine where it's mixed with oxygen to ensure optimal combustion. So well, just, just for clarity here, these massive engines that power these cargo ships, I'm guessing they're modeled after like car engines, right? You got the pistons, you're injecting fuel, it combusts with air, and then it moves yeah. up and down, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. T- turns a crank, which you know will end up turning the prop in the back of the ship. Gotcha. Very, very similar principles. Um, you know, so combustion is actually pretty, pretty delicate. So that fuel air mixture, um, is pretty critical to a lot of the parts of engine performance. So it can massively affect the output power of the engine, the efficiency of it, the amount of emissions that come out. And this is something that's important to focus on. Um, clearly as we try to make the maritime industry efforts more sustainable, um, as well as the engine lifetime. So all these things can be tweaked or ruined um, by the design of the fuel injection nozzle that you know one tiny part that sprays fuel into the engine Um, so this team from technical university of denmark is looking at this and saying you know how are these fuel injection nozzles made can we look at you know the design are there any flaws are there any ways we can improve the manufacturing methods well the main two manufacturing methods for fuel injection nozzles are metal injection molding mim and also machining Okay. So I'm not going to dive into completely those manufacturing processes, but what I'm going to focus on is a lot of the pitfalls of those manufacturing processes that they see that 3D printing may be able to eventually eclipse. Okay. That sounds good. For metal metal injection molding, you have to deal with sinking, um, uneven heating and cooling, wall thicknesses, flashes and witness lines, you know, that shows where the two parts of the die come apart if there's an ugly line there. Um, Also, making sure that the design is cooling evenly versus trying to get metal flow everywhere out through the die you know metal injection molding a lot of complexities a lot of areas for it to fail and what you have to do there basically is modify the design to accommodate the manufacturing method same thing happens with machining you have to make sure that the tool has access Um, when you do that you have to make relief cuts so you know say you're trying to cut a corner a round drill bit can't cut a sharp corner very well so you end up adding a curve there you modify the design based on the tool and the manufacturing method that you're using. And so what they're saying here is 3D printed metal can provide us with opportunities to redesign this very, very important part of ship engines that were not previously possible because, you know, metal injection molding has these constraints, uh, machining has these constraints, and they're saying 3D printing has less constraints. So, you know, like we said, remove some of the rules of design and lets people redesign things in a way that might fundamentally solve the problems better yeah so the tldr here is that with metal injection molding you're compromising because your design has to meet the uh, manufacturing process that requires the molten metal to cool the right way to get the right thickness things like that and the same thing happens with machining because now you got to design for these relief cuts and the different processes required for the machining process so you're never able to get the ideal design but with 3d printing you can really get any design you want without having to compromise on anything right yeah, there there are some very minor things that you have to think about in terms of 3d printing it depends on um especially with metal 3d printing on which method you use um a lot of people one of the leading ones is binder jetting okay and what that means is you print with a metal powder and then also a binder which is like glue that holds everything together mm-hmm. and so when you're printing you know not at extra you know, ultra high temperatures where metal is red hot, the binder is actually the thing that's holding all the metal powder into shape and that geometry that you want. And then you go and put it in an oven and all the binder cooks off. And what you're left with is metal that fuses together. Um, I actually designed my own belt buckle with our family crest on it. That's how I did it with, was with binder jetting. 
Um, but one of the things you have to focus on there is the parts can shrink up to 20% during oh, the wow. jetting and then Which I guess the makes sense. process. So there are some complexities to it, but a lot of the main geometrical complexities, you know, in terms of like, you can't have a curve that's this shape or you can't have varying thicknesses or you can't have a sharp corner. All these things, you know, that molding and machining might take, you know, say this is impossible. Some of those constraints are removed with 3D printing. Obviously, there's still complexities, but what they're saying is um, a lot of the things that may have held back engineers in the past, they can now look at this now that metal 3D printing is reliable and it's attainable. They can look at the problem again and say, hey, should we redesign this? And that's what they did. So all in simulation, they haven't yet put this into practice and put it in a real marine engine, but they, uh, their simulated new design has improved engine combustion um, and they think that it will also uh, remove nitrous emissions from the engine as well. So that would, you know, interesting help get rid of the or mi minimize the greenhouse gas effect coming out of the um, marine engines. You know that basically their whole job is to run twenty four seven from until they get from point A to point B. That's really interesting. Um, so uh, another thing I have, um, I, I don't know how the the engine maintenance works for marine engines, but. I'm going to take a wild guess. Like, do they have spare parts on board? Is, is that something that they would consider if, if you're a massive yeah, I, cargo I ship? I imagine they have to keep spare parts on board because right. you don't want to get stranded in the middle of the ocean. Right? Especially if you're like, you know, carrying critical cargo or if you're like a cruise ship that's getting people around the world yeah, and you don't well, want to we, be stuck. We saw, we saw the blockage in the Suez Canal <laughs> earlier in 2021, yeah. how that screwed up the entire global supply chain. So, you know, if they didn't carry spare parts before, now they're going to, knowing that if one ship goes down in the wrong place at the wrong time, it could mess everything up. And like, um, in, instead of carrying spare parts, if you're using more 3D printed parts, you could just have the raw material and the 3D printer, and then you could just create whatever is needed yeah, you could make it part A if you need it, or you can make it into part B or part C if you need it. Which uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, it reminds me kind of of what we talked about on the International Space Station where mm -hmm. they're putting 3D printers on there so that they can 3D print replacement parts if they need to. Exactly. That That's exactly what I was thinking about too. So I think that's super cool. Um, the like, like you kind of said it, the long and the short of it is um, the flow-related nozzle features that allow the fuel to flow through the nozzle um, as well as special high-temperature materials that can't be made. You know, they're too hard to be machined and they can't be made very well through metal injection molding. Um, they can now do this with 3D printing. So they're basically saying some of those constraints are removed in terms of nozzle features and design as well as the materials that they can use. It, ba basically impossible to realize with any other manufacturing process. So they said, you know, if you want something with this level of performance, 3D printing is the only way to get it. And they've tried a couple different metal 3D printing methods, and they're hoping their next step is to get one of these nozzles into a marine engine and test the efficiency. Wow. That's really cool. I'm, I'm not... I don't think that we've ever really covered anything in the marine uh, engineering side. Well, Not I think, that I recall. Well, actually, actually we, we did like a hydroplane, if you remember. That was kind of like aerospace slash marine. But I, I think this is the first marine dedicated topic we've done. And it's so interesting because the way I'm thinking about it is that this might seem like a small change, but there are maybe hundreds, if not thousands of ships working like every single day to move stuff around and any slight improvement for one of those can be applied to all of them and imagine the impact we can have in terms of reducing yeah. greenhouse gas emissions and, and, right you know, and increasing the lifespan of those yeah. things so you don't have to you know put in all that all those resources into making a new engine um you know minor minor efficiency changes like you're saying cascaded across thousands and thousands of ships it will have a major impact absolutely